Turning now to a topic that impacts thousands of African-American women, heart disease. We are just coming off American Heart Month, so it's a good time to remind women of this major health risk, and it really is major. The American Heart Association says cardiovascular diseases kill nearly 50 thousand African-American women each year. 49% of black women ages 20 and older have heart disease, and only 52% of African-American women know what the signs and symptoms are of a heart attack. Joining me now are Dr. Victoria Dooley of Ascension Providence Hospital and heart disease survivor Leslie Potts Ming. Both of you, welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Let's you. start with those numbers. Yes. Uh, 52 thousand. That is an incredible number of people it suffering is. from heart disease. Yes, um, a woman dies every 80 seconds from heart disease here in the United States and black women are particularly at risk. 50% of black women over the age of 20 have heart disease and that seems like if you're in a room of black women one out of two that seems kind of overwhelming. Lot, it right. is. Um, and me, be, me, I don't have heart disease, my mother doesn't have heart disease. So if I wasn't a practicing physician I would kind of question that statistic that number, a little right? bit yeah. but being a practice practicing physician and having so many patients that are women of color oh my god it's just so devastating black women of all ages they absolutely do have heart disease at higher rates than other women I see it every day yeah so when we say they have heart disease mm -hmm. give me an idea of what that actually means I wonder if, if people really understand what heart disease is. Right, well heart disease could be one of a number of things. High blood pressure, especially prevalent in African American communities. Yes. So hypertension or high blood pressure, um, heart attacks, strokes, some people have congenital heart disease, heart disease um, that was present when they were a child, mm -hmm. um, peripheral vascular disease, clogged arteries. Um, so all those things are forms of heart disease and um, it is especially uh, black maternal mortality um, mm -hmm. is a huge issue and heart disease is the number one cause of death um, in, black, in black women when they're uh, giving childbirth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leslie, tell us your story. Um, hi, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. I'm glad to talk <laughs> with you earlier. Um, my story, growing up through childhood, I was very athletic. I always played sports, soccer, ran. And I remember in the sixth grade, I told my parents, like, you know, I'm trying to run. I feel like I can't breathe. Mm. So I went to the pediatrician, and they immediately said, oh, she has exercise-induced asthma. Let's give her an inhaler. Okay, fine. I used that sometimes, but I felt like it wasn't helping, so I stopped using it. Didn't really have an issue talking to my parents regarding it. Um, I would have, so fast forward, I stopped using an inhaler. I still played sports, still played soccer. In college, I would have episodes where I would start sweating, and I feel like I can't breathe, and my heart was racing. I went to several different doctors um, out of state, you know, trying to get some help. Mm -hmm. I was very athletic. I was probably 35, 40 pounds smaller than I am now. And they did an EKG on me and said, oh, you're fine. Don't worry about mm -hmm. it. It took into 2006. I was pregnant with my second child, and um, my blood pressure was really, really high. I was rushed. Up. I was like 23 weeks pregnant. I was admitted to the hospital, and I was there until he was born. He was born stillborn. Mm -hmm. And um, mm. yeah, with, with the, I met a cardiologist there. He did an echocardiogram, which is like an ultrasound of your heart. And he determined, he said, well, your heart is enlarged. You've had high blood pressure uh, for a long time. I said, no, I have it. You know, he said, so after the, the birth of my son, I was home for maybe six weeks. He said, let's follow up in my office. I wore a halter monitor, which is like, it looks like a small pager, sure. two, two leads. And if I felt a symptom, I would press a button. I wore it for like maybe three weeks mm -hmm. that, that same day. And I would call over the phone. It sends a reading in the EKG strip. The doctor said, okay, I called in the pharmacy. You have SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. Wow. Your heart rate resting is 120 beats per minute. When you're pressing the button, it's at up to 220. Oh, my goodness. So I was immediately put on medication. And, you know, I took the medicine and I said, you know, I, I had to take it so many times a day in a high dosage to control my, my issue. He said, you know, we'll talk in the office or other options. And the options were cardiac ablation. So they go in through your groin yeah. and they kill the parts of your heart that are misfiring. Mm. That first one was in May. Five months later, my heart healed itself. Wow. So they had to do another one. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a story with a, with a good ending. But I mean, the, but the, to this story the fear a, that, that she must have felt and not knowing. Right. And listening to the story um, as a black female, black females are less likely to be believed. So 
you had this issue for a long time. You felt like something wasn't right. Somebody said it was one thing. That inhaler didn't help you. And so as black women, um, it's extra stressful. We have to be advocates for ourselves because right. whenever we have pain complaints or any complaints in the medical profession, we're more like less likely to be believed. And that causes death. Yes. Um, these are life and death situations. Yeah. So we have to be our own best advocates as black I mean, women. We talk a lot about... Um you know, access to health care and, and taking the initiative to go and access health care if you have access to it, and yeah. that's a huge issue in, is. in our community. But, but what you're talking about is very different. Yes. This is someone who had access to health care, mm -hmm. said, I don't feel good, yes. this is not working, and still was was misdiagnosed and as you point out not believed right and it, it could have been fatal um, african-american women in their 30s are more likely to die from some type of heart disease than cancer or assaults or hiv mm -hmm. combined right, right yeah so it's a huge issue yeah. for even as young as in the 30s and women black women are having more cardiac events at younger ages so typically we think of a heart attack being an older white male mm -hmm. and when women go to the er to go get addressed with chest pain symptoms. It takes longer for doctors to treat them and get them the medications that they need. There are studies that um, women who present with heart issues in the emergency department actually get better care when they're treated by female doctors. So there's a need for more female doctors in yeah. medicine and especially black female doctors. Yeah. Uh, how common is uh, Leslie's story in terms of the outcome? That, that she's gonna be okay and they were right. able to eventually diagnose what was going on and treat it? Yes, well per, um, early detection is crucial. Mm -hmm. um, so fortunately, Leslie was okay, but so many women aren't. Again, in your 30s as a black female, you're more likely to die from heart disease and right. cancers, assaults, etc. So early detection is the key, and that's why it's important to go to your doctor once a year for annual physical. Oh, you know, well, I feel okay. Why go to my doctor? Hypertension is called a silent killer because mm -hmm. you can be walking around with high blood pressure for years and not, and not feel it. it. Yeah. Some people say they feel their blood pressure, but that's very rare. <laughs> um, so you need to go to your doctor and get some prevention and, and to know your number. You need to find out what your cholesterol is. Mm -hmm. You need to know if you have diabetes. There are millions of women who have prediabetes or diabetes and they don't know. So diabetes, high blood pressure, these are things that contribute to heart disease. So mm -hmm. it's important to see your doctor once a year and to go over your numbers and discuss your risk. Yeah. Uh, I, I said in the open that a lot of people don't know what the symptoms even are of heart disease or a heart attack. Uh, let's, let's let the viewers know what, what they should be looking for. Well, for me, mine is a little bit different because I have cardiac arrhythmias. Mm -hmm. So even after I had two ablations and I was on medication, there were times I still wasn't feeling well. So I trusted my doctor. He believed me. Mm -hmm. I, was, I wore a halter monitor again. And at that point, I was having three and four second heart pauses. I was feeling like I was going to pass out. Wow. Um, I have a pacemaker now. I have had it for 10 years, so that's mm -hmm. helped me. But it's really... For me, the symptoms have, I felt like my heart was hiccuping. Mm -hmm. That's one, one thing I can describe because I was having a lot of palpitations. Mm -hmm. So things like that. Um, if I'm not hydrated enough, the symptoms are worse. If I feel like I'm catching a cold, I need to really get on it. And just, yeah, yeah th those are how I was feeling, my particular issues. Mm -hmm. Chest pain, palpitations, mm -hmm. feeling like your heart is racing, difficulty breathing. Sometimes it's asthma, sometimes it's actually related to your heart. And women, um, because we have so many roles, right, so many hats, um, we're daughters and we're mothers mm -hmm. and we're spouses and we have to work. So we often delay care for ourselves. So we're more likely to wait when we experience maybe yeah. some fatigue or some mild right. chest pain. I'll go lay down. Right. right. Yeah. You know, you have a ton of other things to do. You're busy taking care of your kids and et cetera. And so it's really important if you don't feel right, if you feel like flu-like symptoms, but you don't have the flu, if you have chest pain, difficulty breathing, it is important to seek medical attention right away yeah. and not just to miss it. Extreme fatigue, just out of the blue, extreme fatigue could be something's going on with your heart. Yeah, yeah. Well, Leslie, I'm really glad that, uh, that things are going to work out for you, but that's a, it's a frightening story. Yeah. Thank all you. too common story, especially yeah. for black women. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you both were here. Thanks for, for sharing with us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.